Ross from DRoss.com. Hey, how's it going? I hope you're really feeling good about tonight. Um, I hope you are doing well wherever you are in the world. If you can go ahead and put that in the comment or the chat, uh, depending on where you are, you might be watching this on Facebook. You could also be watching this on YouTube. Uh, but wherever you are, I hope that number one, you're safe. Number two, your family's doing well. Number three, you're blessed and ready for some really good information. Hopefully you also have uh, decided to bring a pen and paper with you because there's gonna be some serious value added to your life. Um, I am Dwayne Ross, the host of this uh, dream, what I'm calling a dream stream, and it's called Passion to Profits TV, where I bring you together with people who have taken their profits uh, excuse me, taking their passion and have identified a way to make a profit. Now, of course, like I said in the beginning of in the first uh, uh, show that you ever saw, I'm looking for people who have actually done the work. They've done the work. I'm not bringing theory in front of you. I'm not getting people who I think might be successful. I'm bringing people who are already successful. They're already in their passion and they're making a difference in many lives. So as you continue to ride with me, you're going to see that the show gets better and better. This is our second show, um, you know, second week in a row that I'm doing it on a Saturday. I'm not sure how we're going to keep the time. If that's the best time right now, I got to do it a few weeks to see how that works. Uh, seven o'clock seems to be a good window for most people from seven to eight. You're here with us. Um, I have a special situation that's happening today because also we're going to be joined by none other than my daughter, actually, Brittany Ross. And I'm going to give you more information as we get closer to that time frame. But tonight, tonight, I want to make sure that we get your money right. So I reached out to one of my dear friends, uh, one of the men in the um, men of power. He's a, a man of integrity. He's a good husband, a good father, a good community leader, a good businessman. He has made an impact on many lives. And because he's impacted other lives, his life has been impacted in a very positive way. He is here uh, to give you some golden nuggets and what I call even platinum nuggets, because these are the nuggets that you can put to work right away and make life better for you and your family, whether it's today, tomorrow, or into the future, because he's going to mention all those levels. But my friend, no other than Mr. Keith Tucker. How you doing, Keith? What's going doing, on? I am doing awesome. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I appreciate you, Mr. Ross, for giving me the platform to be able to come before the people and speak about something that I love to talk about, which is generational wealth. Yes, generational wealth. Now, you guys, when you think about generational wealth, you got to think about, OK, who starts the pendulum swinging, right? And in some families, They've had generational wealth from one generation to the next generation through home ownership, through business development, and so many different things. I'm going to give the whole floor to Keith. He's going to be talking to you for the next few few uh, moments. Um, Keith, uh, I know that there was a few things, you know, as far as questions that I may ask or you may want to even propose to people. If there was one thing you want to say to the people to get them prepared, what's that one question you want them to be burning in their mind to hear from you when you say, hey, here's some things that I want you to pay attention to. You know, one of the things that I really, uh, really believe in is the Bible. And the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children. So my question to you all tonight is, are you leaving your children generational wealth or are you leaving them generational debt? And we got to wait a minute. Before wait, before. slow down on that one, Mr. Keith. Slow down on that one. You said generational wealth or generational debt. Yes. How does that happen? Uh, most of it happened because most people are not taught wealth creation strategies that can literally help them get in a position where they're building generational wealth. A lot of the schools that we go to just don't teach these wealth creation strategies that I'm getting ready to teach today. But after the day, if you won't be able to say that because I want you all to take as many notes as possible because note takers 
are money makers. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> write that down, you guys. Write that down, you guys. Write that down, ladies and gentlemen. Note takers. Oh, man. Okay, okay. So we, we I'm a note taker, man. I, I, I'm a note taker, so I must be a money maker. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. I, 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 I'll wait for all of it to start coming on in, but I got to tell you, I'll be taking some notes, Keith. I'll be taking some notes. All right, y'all. I'm going to bring his presentation up. Uh, in in a moment, but before we do that, Keith, just tell us a little bit about your story. Take us through yes. the journey and and how you went from where you are to, to where you were to where you are now. And you know, I, I let them know in the intro, your father, your your you know your husband, your a community leader. Uh, talk about yes. that real quick. Yes. So uh, right now, uh, I'm married to uh, a fine young lady by the name of Cheyenne Tucker. I love her to death. And uh, we have three beautiful children, two boys and a girl. And one of the things that I did not want to allow them to see was me to see me struggling financially. And lo and behold, I got in a situation where my finances was totally messed up. I was living paycheck to paycheck, borrowing from Paul to pay Peter. And I was just struggling to make ends meet. And lo and behold, I was on the football field one evening and I was watching my son play football. And as he was playing football, I overheard a gentleman talking about wealth creation strategies. So I kind of eavesdropped on this conversation, didn't let him know I was listening, because as men, sometimes we want people to think we got it all together. But I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling. <laughs> So when he uh, finished, I, I literally chased him down and I asked him, I said, hey, uh, I heard you talking about some wealth creation strategies and debt elimination. Is that something that you teach? And he said, yeah, come on by my house and I'll teach you everything I know. So I went by his house one Saturday and he started putting some stuff on the board. And I was like, wow, where did you learn all this information from? And he said, oh, I'm involved with a phenomenal company called My Econ. And so when I got involved with my econ, I started applying these strategies that I learned. And I'm going to tell you four things that happened to me. Number one, before my econ, I had over $100,000 worth of debt. I got involved. Wait, 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 wait. Because I know mm -hmm. I don't have $100,000. But yes. before you got involved, you had $100,000. Yes. All right, y'all, listen. If y'all got $10,000, <laughs> y'all struggling with $6,000. Y'all struggling with twenty five thousand. Y'all struggling with fifty six thousand. <laughs> He's had a hundred, hundred, one yeah, zero 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 <laughs> zero zero. That's a lot of zeros, Keith. <laughs> a lot of zeros, bro. Go ahead with the story. Go ahead. I had a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, and I started applying these strategies that I'm getting ready to teach you all today. And I literally eliminated all one hundred thousand dollars of debt in one. Year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One year. <laughs> One year. <laughs> One year. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy phenomenal. How, and you know how, how did that even happen? Oh, I started applying the strategies. I started putting the money I got for my pay raise on a job because we're going to teach people how to correct their W-4. I started making money in the business. And then I put all that money towards my debt. And in one year, I eliminated it. Now, the beauty of that was that freed up $2,400 a month because before I paid off that debt, I was servicing it with $2,400 a month. Right. I now have $2,400 coming back to my pocket building me wealth instead of the creditor's pocket. Ooh, say that Number again. Two. Yeah, I have now have $2,400 coming back to my pocket building me wealth instead of the creditor's pocket. I don't know. I, I got I to gotta get back into the information, key because I'm trying to yeah. save. They've been all in my pockets. They they on my shoes. They, they under my hat. Man, I'm just, I'm like, where are y'all coming from? Go ahead, Keith. Go ahead. So. Number two, I was able to increase my credit score. So before my econ, I had a 520 credit score. I went from a 520 to an 804 all in the same year that I eliminated that debt. The same year. <laughs> People are not going to believe you, Keith. They go, they're not going to believe you. They're going to want to see. They when I show like, them these strategies tonight. I want to have faith. I do, I do. But I want to see how he did this. <laughs> you said Number three, I was able to cash flow six figures part-time, not in full-time, part-time without stopping what I was currently doing. And then last but not least, I've been able to create myself an emergency fund because before my econ, my credit cards were emergency fund. But that's a no-no because 
when you use your credit card, you buy something once, but end up paying for it two or three times over because of interest. Yeah. So those four strategies happened in my life and it literally changed my whole financial portfolio around. So tonight I'm going to show you the strategies that I use so that you can have the same exact success. Because one thing I know, God's not a respecter of person. If he did it for me. He can do it for you too. Wow. Okay. So all four real quick are what now? A uh, debt, a hundred thousand dollars of the debt gone in one year. I went from a 520 to an 804 in my credit score in the same year. Cash flow six figures part time. And then also been able to create myself a true emergency fund. Woo! I need to use your emergency fund for a couple months. <laughs> I, I got a couple of emergencies, so I'm going to come use your emergency fund, Keith. That's, that's what's going to happen. All right, so listen, I'm going to bring the presentation on. I'm going to share the screen. So you're going to see his presentation, y'all, and he's going to be still talking. You should be able to see us on the sideline, and hopefully this is not too small for you. But um, if you it is, go over to YouTube. It's a little bit bigger. But uh, this is on Facebook, of course, so let's make that happen. So I'm going to go ahead and get this shared up so we can uh, see exactly what, what, what it is that you're going to be sharing with us. Let's get this PowerPoint up and going. And uh, what you, let's, let's see. Oh, I'm going to start yeah, from. Yes. I love it. You see it, so, right? You see it really yep. good? Start from yep. the beginning. From the beginning. All right. So this is Strategy Session 369, Financial Transformation. Go for it, Keith. All right. So there are two objectives that everyone's trying to accomplish every single day. Two objectives. So you can go ahead and click the next one. You will see the two objectives come up. Now, here are the two objectives that everyone's trying to accomplish every day. Objective number one is people are trying to go to a job or some sort of business to earn enough income to provide for their current lifestyle. So think about it. The food that you eat, the clothes that you wear the house that you live in, all that has to be paid for some way. And most people do that through a job or a business, which we call labor. Now, the second objective that people are trying to accomplish is while they work in that job or business, they're trying to simultaneously put enough money in some type of asset or investment so that when they retire, their money works for them instead of them working for the money. See, think about it. One day we're going to come off our job, whether it's age, health, downsizing, outsourcing, or we just sick and tired of going to work. But in right. order for us to successfully walk away from that job, we need to meet, make sure that our money's working for us instead of us working for the money. Ooh. Now, here's the problem. Many people think that Social Security is going to take care of them. But how many people you know collect a Social Security check and still struggle to make ends meet? So Social Security no longer works. The other thing that people think is going to take care of them are pensions, but as you know, there are people that collect a 401k in a pension and still struggle to make ends meet. So that no longer works. Now, let's talk about the four challenges or obstacles that are stopping people from meeting their two objectives. The first challenge is inflation. We call that the silent killer. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. If you were making $7 an hour in 1990 and you're making $14 an hour today, the truth of the matter is you still make $7 an hour because even though your paycheck went up, so did the cost of daycare, so did the cost of food, so did the cost of clothing. So your paycheck went up an inch when inflation went up a foot. You'll Ooh. never get ahead financially if you don't do anything to outpace inflation. Let's talk about the second one, taxes. When it comes to taxes, you lose the first one third of your income to taxes. I like to call taxes the thief in the night because as you lay down to sleep, four thieves came in your house and robbed you of your hard earned income. How many of you heard of federal, state, FICA, and Social Security? They came in and took a third of your income right off the top before you even got a chance to spend any of your hard earned income. Wow. See, taxes is one of the biggest bills you pay outside of your mortgage and your car note. Let's talk about challenge number three, which is debt. Debt comes in and takes the second one third of your income. Now, I like to believe that debt is a result of taxes. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say you were making $50,000 a year on your job. You probably told the mortgage company you make $50,000. You told the car dealership you make $50,000. But you know what the truth of the matter is? 
You never bought home 50,000 because you lost a third of your income, the taxes. So you really bought home about 35,000. But here's the dilemma. You got financed at 50,000. So you end up in debt because you're buying things that you technically can't afford. Woo. See, we talking about the challenges that are keeping you living paycheck to paycheck. Let's talk about the last one, big business. Big business takes the final third of your mm -hmm. income. Let me tell you something about big business. Big business is smart and crafty. Big business knows what time to play the commercials, what colors to use, what celebrities to use. But you know what big business knows the most? They know that every single month there's a holiday. So big business runs a holiday sale every single month. Let me prove it to you. In January, we got New Year sales. February, Valentine's Day sales. March, spring break sales. April, Easter sales. May, Memorial and Mother Day sales. June, Father Day sales. July, 4th of July sales. August, back to school <laughs> sales. September, Labor Day sales. October, Halloween sales. November, we got, now they got Thanksgiving called Brown Thursday. So they make you eat your food super fast so you can go shopping on Thanksgiving. <laughs> then you got Black Friday, I'm tired. Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday. <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to Christmas yet. I'm tired. You got Christmas. <laughs> big business knows that every single month you're going to participate and big business gets wealthy and many people get uh, poor because of it. See, I like to use an example of a boat. No matter how big a boat is on the ocean, if the boat has holes in it, sooner or later the boat is going to sink. Same goes for your income. It doesn't matter if you're making six figures, seven figures, or eight figures. If you have holes in your income, Sooner or later, your income is going to sink. I just named the four holes that are in your income. And if you don't plug those holes up, it doesn't matter how much money you make. You're going to live paycheck to paycheck. And in some cases, in poverty. All right, now, guys, you see the challenge, the challenge, inflation, taxes, debt, big business. There yes. is a solution, though. There is a there solution. Is a solution. I'm going to provide you all three solutions today that's going to help you build wealth and plug those holes that are in your income. So let's talk about the three solutions. The first one is called cash flow management. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that most people are what we call cash flow negative? You say, what is cash flow negative? Cash flow negative is this. If you're paying this much bills with this much money, you are literally one pink slip away from a financial catastrophe. Let me say that again. If you are paying this much bills with this much money, you are literally one pink slip away from a financial catastrophe. See, you shouldn't be paying this much bills with this much money. You should be paying this much bills with money you made last year or the year before. But because we are cash flow negative, we fall into that cycle. I'm going to live paycheck to paycheck. I pay my car note when I get paid next paid. I'm going to pay my mortgage when I get paid next paid. But what happens if you walk into your job and your job lets you go? Your whole financial portfolio is in disarray. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my, what my econ is going to do. First thing we want you to do is we want to help a person, if you're working a job, minimize your taxes. I didn't say evade your taxes and I didn't say don't pay your taxes. I said minimize your taxes. So here's what you got to understand. When you work a job, you're taxed at the highest tax bracket. 28 to 33 percent. Even mm -hmm. though you have options, most people choose a job because that's what's preached to us the most. Our parents will go to school so we can get a good job. Our professors say stay in college so we can get a good job. That's what's preached to us the most. But unfortunately, that's what's taxed the most as well. Here's what happens when you work a job. I work. I'm taxed. And the little bit that's left over, which is hardly nothing, I spend. That's the reality of a job. <laughs> I work. I'm taxed and a little bit less left over, I spend. But here's a solution we're going to help you with. The first thing we do is we're going to teach you how to minimize your taxes. One of the first things we do is we educate a person how to adjust their W-4 form that they filled out when they first started their job. The IRS says that over 80% of Americans have that form filled out incorrectly. Most people Ask their human resource person, and the human resource person doesn't know how to fill it out. We teach you line by line, front and back, how to adjust that form. And we've seen people pick up somewhere between 100 to as high as $1,000 extra in their paycheck without owing at the end of the year. My question to you all there, 
Who wants to get a pay raise on their job without asking a boss? We Ooh. teach you exactly how raise to raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> now, most people say, Keith, you know, I don't want to adjust my W4. I like getting my tax refund at the end of the year. Let, let's talk about that for a minute. When you get a refund, let's break down the word refund. Re means again, fund means money. So if I got a $5,000 refund, what that simply means is I allowed the government to keep my $5,000 from January to December, interest free, by the way. They took my hard earned money, invested it, then refunded me a percentage of my money and then had a nerve to tax me on it. So what we teach you is get your refund throughout the year instead of waiting till the end of the year. See, the bill collectors are collecting their money now. They're not waiting till the end of the year. By getting your money now, you can pay off your debt faster. You can put more money in your investments and you can have more money for your lifestyle. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to minimize and ultimately eliminate your debt. We provide a phenomenal software that literally works like an electronic financial advisor. It builds you a financial blueprint and game plan to help you become debt free. You heard me earlier say that I eliminated over a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt in one year. The software built me a game plan. I followed it step by step and became debt free in one year. Next, we're going to show you how to minimize your expenses. See, there are some things that we need to look over in our lives that maybe we need to minimize. You know, instead of always buying lunch at work, start bringing your lunch. You know, maybe you can get a cheaper cell phone deal. You know, there are some things that you can minimize, which also creates another stream of income. So think about it. Number one, we created correctly your W-4. That's a stream of income. Number two, we take that extra money from the W-4 and we start putting it towards your debt to help you eliminate your debt fast. You start minimizing your expenses that creates another stream of income. You can start putting that money towards your debt. The quicker and more money you have, the quicker you can pay that debt off. Also, which is not listed, we also teach you how to correct and restore your credit. We provide you with a software called the My Credit System that literally walks you through step by step how to restore and repair your credit. It comes with letters. It comes with laws. It comes with tutorial videos that can literally teach you everything you need to know when it comes to credit. Our system is a do it yourself because we believe if you give a man a fish, you eat for a day. But if you teach a man a fish, he'll yeah. eat for a lifetime. So we Keith, want you to eat. Mm -hmm. You 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 took this solution. Number one, this W2, uh, the taxation, the minimizing the debt, the minimizing expenses. And that's what you use to service all to, to, to go after that one hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Yes. Yes. I all right. So everybody, you know, as I said, um, Keith is a strategist. He's a financial strategist. He's been owning this business for not more than I mean, for, for more than one year. So he's not brand new. What right. I want you guys to do is really pay attention to the fact that your solution is you. You are your solution. Yes. Yes. Uh, we talked about this when we talked about your dreams, right? You are the solution. You are the primary um, equation. Like when you look at the denominator, he's like, what's the, what's the common denominator? You are the common denominator yes. in your own success. So take advantage of this information. I hope you're writing it down. Uh, Keith yes. will show you at the end of how to connect with him. Uh, he's on the page. So all you got to do is, you know, connect with him here. If you're on LinkedIn, you're going to connect with him here because I'm in LinkedIn right now. I'm in Facebook right now and I'm in YouTube right now. All yes. right. Wherever you see this, Keith is going to give you information at the end on how to connect with him. All right. Let's yes. talk about these assets, Keith. Let's talk about. Oh, these yes. Assets. Yes. The next thing I want to talk about is entrepreneurship. This is very important because it's important to have multiple streams of income. Why? Because if your plan A, which is your job, slows down, so will your income. If your plan A stops, which is happening for many people right now because it's a pandemic, so will your income. So you need to have multiple streams of income. Here's what you got to understand. Your job is not secured. Let, let me say that again. Your job is not secured. See, your CEO and your job has something called a balance sheet. There's an asset side and there's a liability side. As an employee, you can be a liability. And every quarter, the CEO looks over his or her numbers. And if the liabilities are outweighing the assets, guess what the CEO is going to do? Let you go. See, you say, Keith, that don't, that's not fair. That's not right. But I want you to think about something. If your money's funny, 
and your change is strange in your own personal household, you start letting go of liabilities too. You'll pick up the phone, Netflix, cancel my subscription today. Even though Netflix been providing you some great movies because your money's funny, you said, cancel my subscription. You're going to pick up the phone, cable company, cancel my subscription. Even though the cable company's been giving you some great movies, you, your money's funny and your change is strange, you start letting go of liabilities. So if you would do it in your own household, what makes you think that the CEO on your job won't do it to you? Your job is not secure. See, let me let me break something down to you. By having a business, you get taxed at a lower tax bracket. You get taxed at 18 to 23 percent, way better than 28 to 33 percent on a job. Here's the difference. Your business works, your business spends, and your business tax. Notice you tax at the end when you have a business instead of being taxed at first when you have a job. If you ever wonder how in the world can these wealthy people pay less taxes, it's because the tax laws favor the business owner. As a business owner, you get a chance to get tax deductions that a regular employee doesn't have access to. So it makes sense to add a business to your portfolio. Now, listen to me carefully, everyone. I'm not telling you to leave your job. I say stay on your job. Your job provides you some great money. But understand this. Your job should be a break in the sentence, not the end of the sentence. Let's break down the word J-O-B for a second. When you first wake up in the morning, you J-O-B, you jump out of bed. Then you <laughs> brush your teeth, <laughs> comb your hair, get in your car, you J-O-B again, you jump on the beltway. You drive all the way to work, get your paycheck, and you get that little bit of money, then you got a J-O-B, juggle it over bills. And then you work 40 plus years and realize, man, I've been J-O-B on a journey of the broke. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, man, you making this hurt. I'm hurting, Keith. I'm hurting over here. What is, what is I was just talking about that 40, 40, 40 plan. And I was I was like yeah. looking at stuff that I started and didn't finish and uh, things that I got involved in that took me off my purpose. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad right now I'm on my purpose. But, oh, my gosh, man, this whole idea <laughs> of biz work, biz spends, biz taxes. Man, yeah. you are talking our language. <laughs> Continue, hey, sir. You got you hit a good point. 40, 40, 40. For those that don't know what that is, that means you work 40 hours a week for 40 years. That's age 25 to 65, just to end up with 40% of your income at retirement. Now think about it. If you're struggling right now of a hundred percent of your income, how in the world are you gonna make up with 40% at retirement? Mm. Many people don't. That's why you see so many people work a job, retire, and then unfortunately have to go back and get another job. And guess what? The 40, 40, 40 clock starts all over again. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. what, what can we do? My econ provides an income shifting membership that provides wealth creation strategies for $35 a month. For $35 a month, we provide you wealth creation strategies, wealth principles, debt elimination, uh, credit repair, financial education, investment training, and so much more. As a business owner, you get a chance to write off your lifestyle. See, there are things you're doing right now, such as driving your car, eating out, your cell phone bill, your internet bill, that literally can be written off if you do it in lieu of business. We have classes that teach you step by step how to get that done. My econ's income shifting membership is life changing because it's literally changed my life as well. Now, we also have a referral where we actually can pay you referral bonuses for referring people to the membership so that they can start learning about their finances and increasing their po financial portfolio. We got, we paid a $25 referral fee for everyone that decides they want to get the membership. And then we pay up to $8 a month for them paying their membership on a, a monthly basis. So you can earn some part-time income without stopping what you are currently doing. And then last and not least, we're going to talk about investment income. Now, we're not an investment company. We don't sell investments. You don't have to get licensed, but we educate people on investing. See, when you invest, you're taxed at less than 15%, way better than 28 to 33% on a job. So your ultimate goal should have a job at a business so that you can write off some expenses to lower your taxable income, but also be in a position where you start investing so your money works for you instead of you working for the money. See, we believe in a thing called cash, asset, cash. You want to take some cash, 
buy and build an asset to make you some more cash. Now, some of the terms you're going to learn in our investment class is capital gains. You're going to also learn about dividends. But you know what the best investments you can ever invest in? I'm going to give you two. Yourself and your business. Those are the two best investments that you can ever invest in. See, when you invest in you, you can never go wrong because there's no such thing as a bad investment when you are investing in you. That's the best way to go. And so in closing, you know, like I said, our membership is only $29. And then 30 days later, it's $34.95 for the membership. And let me tell you, it's literally been life changing. And I like to say that four things. Most people, when they hear the information, they say they'll think these four things in their mind. The first thing they say, Keith, man, you said a whole lot of information today. You know, let me tell you, you're exactly right. But let me tell you something else. When you first started your job, your job went over a whole lot of information. And guess what we did? We stayed there long enough to collect the paycheck and some of us still there. <laughs> so let's take that off the table. Number two, you said, Keith, I'm just too busy. I got a lot going on in my life. I just don't know if I can use the membership. And I can understand that too, because I was busy being busy before my econ too. Busy being broken had nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's amazing that so many people say their plate is full, but when you see them, they're barely eating. We got to change that mindset. Number three, you say, Keith, you know, it sounds good, but, I, you know, I'm waiting on God. And I can understand that, too, because I'm a praying man myself. But let me ask you something. Are you waiting on God or is God waiting on you? Because the God I serve is 100 percent on time. So and more likely he's waiting on you. And last but not least, you said, Keith, twenty nine dollars and ninety five cent. You know, I, I want to do it, but I may have a problem coming up with twenty nine dollars. I'm not going to say nothing bad about that, but let me encourage you to do two things. One, ask yourself, how long do you want to have a twenty nine dollar problem? And two, what are you going to do to fix it? I encourage you, if you keep doing what you're doing, you will keep getting what you're getting. Something has to change. And like my shirt says, we want to build generational wealth, not generational debt. <laughs> Man. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, I, I've heard the presentation before, Keith. Today, I actually heard it even louder um, because I can I could think of moments where I was on purpose with my finance and then something happened in my life and it took me off course. You know, one of the things some of you guys don't know, but some of you guys do know, I went through a divorce, right? And so um, there's assets involved in uh, losing assets that way. Uh, you know, I have children in college, so there's, you know, money that has to go to support them. I don't want my son, uh, Jonathan, to have to actually get a job while he uh, focuses on his education uh, the way that his sister had to. Uh, she was the first one out of the three uh, going. And then, of course, Christian was grown and married, so he's doing his own thing. But, you know, um, these strategies, you can start when, Keith? When can you start these? Like, do I have to be 25 to start? Do I... Do I have to be 45 to start? I mean, if I'm ready to retire from work, should I just say, well, it's too late? I mean, tell us about that. Oh, good question. You can start these strategies as early as possible. I always tell people it's always, I wish I would have known this information 10, 20 years ago. My whole financial situation will probably be even way better than it is now. So I highly recommend that a person start right away. You know, start the children at an early age letting them understand about credit card debt, letting them understand about um, paying bills on time and how important their credit is. It's important to start these strategies as early as possible. Get those kids familiar with it at an early age so that they can start off on top instead of trying to crawl their way up to the top. Well, you know, I think one of the things that you talk about is even how uh, the tax laws for business allows the children to work or something. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yes. So there's something called the child labor law that allows you to hire your children. You can pay your children up to $12,000 per child to work in your business. Think about it. You're already paying them an allowance. What we're going to do is show you how to change it from paying them an allowance to paying them a wage. See, the clothes that they want, the food that they want to eat, all that can be paid for from the $12,000. But get this the $12,000 tax deductible to you. It's non-taxable to the child, but it's a tax right off to you. So you can pay up to 12,000 per child. So think about it, you have two children, that's a $24,000 tax deduction for doing what you were gonna do anyway. Wow. But now Keith, when they file their taxes at the end of the year, the kids, 
right? Because they're going to have to now be a <clears throat> responsible to pay taxes. Uh, they didn't make enough money, right? So do they just write that off or do they get some of that back? They they because they didn't make any money, as long as you don't pay them over twelve thousand dollars, then they won't get into any of the problems where they got to start paying taxes. But as long as you stay in that twelve thousand dollar range, then it's completely written off. Wow. Mm -hmm. You guys hear that? So that means little Johnny who's running around making noise. If you just say go over there to the copy machine and pick yep. up some copies and come on over here and give it to grandma or give it to mama or daddy or whatever, or you say, here, here's my pencils. Go shopping my pencils in this sharpener. And they go over there. They have a ball. They sharpen all the pencils. <laughs> have a good old time, right? They actually are doing work, Keith. Yes. They're doing work. You have them, have them pass out business cards and flyers into your expenses and an expense organizer for you. They, they won't, You was going to pay them anyway. Now you get a chance to write it off. <laughs> now let me ask you this. Now, if I give my little man a little shirt that says he's a CEO, I put him a little hat on too. Is that tax deductible? Yes, that's right. Because now you he's doing your advertising. That's advertising. So you get a chance <laughs> to make that on. <laughs> man, I don't know. What family don't want to do this? You got six that's kids. Right. That's right. <laughs> you get 12 for each kid? Yes, $12,000 per so child. You, you put every on. kid together and say, look, all y'all going to work. You know, y'all gonna be walking billboards. Y'all gonna wear my shirt right. and walk around the neighborhood for an hour and a half. That's your job, right? Walking That's billboards, right. six of them. That's, right. That's six times twelve. I don't know about y'all, but y'all need to do some math. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too. I need some kids. Keep. Can I borrow some kids? Class is grown. I need some deductions. <laughs> I need some. I always make man, a joke. Oh with people man, say, this is so you know, good. It's so a lot rich. Of people say they want now, you kids. know what, Keith? One of the things that I have a challenge with and I've had a challenge with is always tracking my expenses versus my ex. You know, the, you know what's going in, what's going out. You know, most of us don't use what business use because business use, you know, an income statement. Right. What went in, what I went out. A lot of us are do doing budgets and stuff. Can you talk about the difference between doing that versus what you guys provide to help people? keep track of their money and what went in and what went out? Yes. So we have a tool called the cash flow manager. I love this tool. Uh, I call it an electronic expense organizer. And this tool mm. allows you to download an app to your phone and you can literally track your expenses on the go. So you could be at a restaurant with your cell phone, hit your app. When the receipt comes out, you can take the receipt in your cell phone. You can take a picture of the receipt. The receipt will upload into the system. You can put the who, the what, the where, everything that the IRS requires in a system will save it in the phone. The good thing about that is a lot of folks go to the taxpayer with a box full of receipts. The receipts either faded or they lost receipts and they're losing money that way. Our system keeps you audit proof because everything is in your cell phone. You never have to worry about losing it ever again or your receipts fading. And the system breaks everything down by category and it totals everything at the end of the year. So it makes your job easy as well as the taxpayer's job easy. It's a great tool. And also the tool comes with a GPS button where you can click it and it will track your miles as you drive your car to help you track and write off your miles. So these are like, that's why you separate your business miles from your personal miles. Yes. So you keep yes. the two separate entities. That way yes. you don't get in trouble with the Mr. Yes. Uncle Sam and them. Uncle, that's Uncle right. Sam that's and right. Uncle Iris be all over the thing. They be that's like, right. <laughs> well, look, man, um, another thing that I, I that it just sparked my thought, and I was like, okay, let me ask him this. You know, you didn't just wake up one day and go, oh, I want to do financial. What what was the passion that got you started in this business? What was the how did your passion get engaged? How did you engage your passion with this? Uh, believe it or not, you know, the Bible says all things work together for good. And believe it or not, my debt worked together for my good. Uh, and that was what sparked my passion. You know, with that hundred thousand dollars of debt, it was really eating at my mind and my soul. And believe it or not, I was actually looking for a second job, not a business. And when I happened to be in the right place at the right time and heard that powerful information, it literally changed my mindset. And then I started to think, I said, wait a minute. I see how this system has blessed me. There are several other people that I know I, that I can help 
change their lives as well because I have a strong passion for helping people. And so when I saw an opportunity that I saw for myself worked on me, I said, without a doubt, I can't keep it to myself. Just like the word of God, I just can't keep it to myself. So I had to go out and share it. And it turned into my passion because another thing is I had a strong why. You know, my children, my family is my why. And why stands for what hurts you or what helps you. And I had a strong why. And one of my whys was my daughter. You know, my seeing my daughter go through all the, the surgeries and the challenges that she went through. She's a strong motivation for me. And I just stay passionate about what I do. But that that will to help people is the reason why I'm so passionate about what I do. Yeah, I actually know about the story related to your daughter. Uh, she's a phenomenal young lady. She stays <laughs> so um, powerfully connected. She's so positive at all times, given all the... Um, things that she had, obstacles she had to go through yes. and break through. And some of them keeps, as a father, I know you were sitting on the sidelines because you couldn't do it for her. She had yes. to do it for herself. Yes. Most of the people that's probably listening to this or will listen to this don't know what that is and what the situation is and not getting too private. Can you talk about that sure. part of your passion and what freed you to allow you to have more time and do more things and be there for your daughter? Yes. Uh, seeing my daughter, uh, believe it or not, my daughter had gone through so much. Uh, she went, she been through two liver transplants, a kidney transplant. Uh, she lost hearing in both of her ears. She's completely deaf uh, at the age of seven because of the transplants that she went through. Um, the doctors said she wouldn't make it, but I tell people all the time, you know, the doctors can get the diagnosis, but God gets the prognosis. He got the final say so. <laughs> so. Hey. They say she wouldn't make it. She's now 18 years old. She's made it way past the time frame that they said that she will make it. And so seeing that the that her life changing and the, the, the passion that she has, that she likes to, to create things. And I say, you know what? I want to be able to make enough money to be able to put her in a position where she can make those bracelets that she likes to make. She likes to make bracelets. And so that's my strong passion and the, and the, the why my why is so positive. It's because she's the main reason that gives me the fuel for my fire to work this business. That's awesome, man. Could you talk about that why again? Because you gave two really cool platinum nuggets. The why. Yes. Why stands for what hurts you and what helps you. And, you know, she has been that why. You know, she's been that, that motivational force to help me get up every morning and say, you know what? I can make it another day. She's my encouragement. And that's the fuel that keeps the fire growing into my stomach every day to work this business and change other people's lives. Awesome, man. Um, one of the things, and um, <clears throat> we have a little bit more time, so I'm just going to ask you sure. two, or more, two or three more sure, questions. Sure. Uh, this is based on uh, the whole idea, the premise of the show is that passions could cre create, pro people could create profits from their passion. And some people teach, don't worry about your passion, just go after the money. But what you said is you had a passion for the heart of people. Yes. And because you had a heart for the passion or a passion for the heart of people, you didn't want to see them struggling. So talk about that, that part, the passion for the people. Yes. Uh, um, by having a passion for the people and you get a chance to change other people's lives, believe it or not, believe it or not the profit will come because of the, the, the help that you provided to people. So I, I have this strong passion to see people go beyond. So, some people put limitations on themselves. They feel like I can only go to this point. But you know, there's, there's so much more in us that if we look deep down inside of us, we can get beyond that box. Some of us is in that box, but we can just look up and open that box. We can realize, wait a minute, there's more to life than what I'm doing. All right. You, 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 you frozen. Did, did you come back? Okay. There you go. You oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you froze I'm that sorry. last part. You said, get out the box. And then I guess yes. you started jumping out. Box. Yes. I don't know what happened. What? <laughs> <laughs> I tell people all the time, you know, get out the box and stop saying I'm good because there's another word that's even better. It's great. So just because you good don't mean you can't be great. So I always tell people push beyond your limits. There's more to you than you think, you know, and trust and believe. God has given us so much more. And some of us just don't open our eyes to say like, wait a minute, I, I can do more. I can be more. And I, I just want to encourage people to reach 
their higher potential? Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I'm currently I did 31 days of positivity over the uh, course of the last 31 days, and one of the things you saw you was there, you know, liking and sharing and stuff like yes. that. Uh, uh, what happened in that is another friend of mine, Rob House, he actually uh, had a show going on, and I was like, man, that's pretty cool. What are you using, right? So he started telling me about the software. And I was like, well, shoot, I really want to do something where I can bring people together and have a conversation. And so um, for me, I have a passion for people too. And financially, I have never been like majorly successful financially, but I've been majorly successful in helping people realize their potential, right? And so uh, years ago, I was doing all this stuff, and now technology has allowed me this platform. And so that's why I reached out to you because I saw that you were there with the positivity and what was going on. And I talk about the DVI concept, and that's the dream, the vision, and then ideas. And for you, it sounds like you had a dream, you had this vision, but you didn't know what's the idea because you was about to go get another job. Yes. And, uh, a lot of us, that's the safe thing, right? It's like, okay. Cause you know, the paycheck's going to come, you know, it's a, it's a positive way to get income and et cetera. However, we're still getting taxed at the 30 something percent, right? Mm -hmm. On the second job. So that $25 or $10 or whatever you're making turns into only half of that. Yes. And then talk about the time that you put in to business versus the time you would put in to a job because some people think well if i go to if i go to be successful i'm gonna have to put a lot of time in let's talk about that real quick i tell people all the time you know a nine to five <laughs> is is how you make your living but five is what you do between five and midnight that's going to really change your life and so i at the beginning i believe in that i put about an hour to two hours a day into the business because i i realized this if i'm going to work every single day 40 plus hours a week building someone else's asset, I can at least put an hour to two hours to build my own asset. So it, it, it's come to a time when you have to really start making a, a change in your mindset to say, you know what, if I'm going to shift my mindset, I got to be able to shift my income too. So I, I'll, I'll give you this these quick four points. Yeah, Number let's one, do it. I always like to leave, I'll leave you with this, seasons of success, four. Number one, the season of preparation. In order to be successful, you got to get yourself prepared. That means getting business cards, brochures, uh, preparing yourself for the word no, because a lot of people just don't get prepared for that word. And that two-letter word has caused many people to give up on their dreams and goals. But let me tell you what no stands for. Next one. Next ah, opportunity. <laughs> next <laughs> one. Okay. They don't know enough to, to move forward. So get prepared for that. Be in preparation and you'll start having success. Well, number one is preparation. Preparation. All Second, right, what's number two, my man? What is number two? Season of planting. You got to plant seeds and you got to plant them consistently. And let me tell you, you can't stand over every seed that you plant and expect it to grow overnight. Because the only seeds that I knew that grew overnight was Jack and the Beanstalk. We all know that was a fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't know that, man. I didn't. I was, they lied to me. Oh, that's, that's it. I'm done with the whole. I gotta go, keep. I'm, I'm. <laughs> and when I say plant seeds, you gotta pass out cards, pass out brochures. You gotta use social media to your advantage. Let people know you're in business because a closed mouth can't get fed. So you gotta let people know that you're in business. Third season, the season of pruning. The season of pruning. This is a hard season for many people because this is a season where you gotta cut some people off. See, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And sometimes we hang around the wrong people and they're speaking death into our business and we're failing because we're allowing the wrong people to speak into our lives. We got to hang around like-minded individuals because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So you got to be around like-minded individuals, but you got to cut some people off. Not only you got to cut some people off, you got to cut some bad habits off. You know, there's something you want to do in your business. You can't use the excuse. It's raining outside. It's snowing outside. I'll do it next time. We got to cut those excuses out so that we can be successful. And then the last and final season is the season of prosperity. Now, this is a season that many people are looking forward to. This is when you get a chance to see your seeds grow and all the harvest that you've been planting. You get to see it just blossom. But be careful in that season because a lot of people 
start making some great money in business. And then unfortunately, they start spending it on liabilities instead of asset and they don't invest it back into their business. Wow. So be careful in that season. But trust and believe that's a beneficial season for you to get there. You just said something really powerful. And I don't want people to miss that, because when you get to that point of prosperity, you said they need to be now looking at assets. Yes. Most of us were never taught what an asset actually is. Yes. I mean. There's there's a lot of talk about, OK, your house is your asset. No, it's not your asset. Your this is your asset. That's not your asset. Can you break that down just a little bit more? Because, you know, I was listening to Laurel Langmire. And one of the things that she says is that look around at what's in your hand. Like, is there something you can do? Right. Because you talked about servicing that debt with the money that you save from the credit card, you know, from as you pay off the bills. Yes. Have you? And so create an, is there a, something you can create an asset from, you know, no, whatever it might be. Like I like to sing. Right. So I could actually go do weddings if I was able to go out and do weddings. Right. And I could get paid to do wedding songs or yeah. I could write a wedding song and send it to somebody and they could pay me. You know, yes. What's an asset? Is that an asset? I mean, what, what is an asset? An asset is something that can generate money for you without you physically having don't have to go and do something to it every day you know uh for example uh it could be a stock so you can put money into a stock and that's generating income without you physically have to go in every day and put more money into it it could be real estate real estate can be an asset because it allows you to get paid you can uh rent the house out to somebody and someone's paying you rent every single month without you physically having to go back to the house every day so anything that uh, provides money to you without you have to you don't have to physically go and touch it every day and I, i'll give you this too i always tell people use 10 10 80 10 percent of your money should first of all go to to god i always tell people don't you know if you are a christian person you know you don't uh uh pay taj you you give Ties. It's, it makes a whole different saying when you say it that way instead of saying get, uh, pay because when you say pay, it's like you paying a bill and people don't like paying a bill. So, right, right, so right. To ties, or if you're not a Christian type person, 10% to some type of charity. Right. You just uh, give you what you are is yeah. plan, you're putting that planning part into play, right? Because you said yes. give and yes. it shall be given. So you're Press actually yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you're taking the principle that's in the yes. earth of seed time and harvest. And you're putting that principle to work. Yes. Then the next 10 percent should be, you know, towards your investing, because if it's good enough for the creator, it's good enough for the creation as well. So put 10 percent towards yourself in your investments. And then the other 80 percent, that's what you use to start paying off your debt and, and et cetera. And one day you want to get in a position where maybe you can get 60, 70, 80 percent <laughs> to giving and 20 percent towards bills. But we got to crawl before before we walk. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's one, two, three percent first before you get. To yes. Pay. I mean, yes. If you're doing something, it's better than something. nothing something. at all. Right. Getting the habit. Getting the habit. Yeah. So the habit of giving. And and, 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 um, and that's another reason why I started doing this, too, because some people you got to pay to go on their show and all this kind of stuff. And I wanted somewhere where just I could just call somebody, have them come on. And as long as they have some concrete, good, solid information to share with people. It's a forum, right? And it just allows yeah. that to happen. And I can make money on a different level. I can make money selling a book. I can make money maybe doing a speaking engagement or whatever it may be. I don't know what the future holds now on all this change for the pandemic. But what you're talking about here is something that people can actually take the time to actually look at their finances now. Because some yeah. people don't even know. They just been paying and going and paying and going and doing and checks come in, checks go out, this person shows up. I mean, they haven't had no time to really assess the holes yes. in the boat. Yes, yes. Right? So true. So, so true. You know, I know that your time is uh is 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 pretty much there. We're at that time. Uh we do have someone coming in, but she's not here yet. So I wanted to kind of just give you more time if you wanted it. I do have a couple other things that I would talk about, but um sure. You know, I didn't know if you had maybe one or two more nuggets you want to shoot out there with everybody, uh, Keith. Or you sure, good? sure. Okay, good. I, good, I, good. I, I'll give another nugget for you. Um, I just want to say to everybody uh, that uh, entrepreneurship is definitely a great 
vehicle to think about. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's my econ or any other vehicle, just get another stream of income, especially during this time where people are losing jobs or losing hours on their jobs. It's so important to have multiple streams of income because you don't want to be in position where you, you don't have another stream of income coming in and the bill collectors are knocking at your door, trying to take your car, take your house. So if you're listening out there, please, please make sure that you add in your portfolio somewhere another stream of income. And one good way is uh, online business because it gives you an opportunity to invest a very small amount instead of going out get a traditional business where there's a lot of risk. So I highly recommend that, again, Get another stream of income, and I guarantee you, you know, it's going to be a very helpful down the line to you. All right. All right. You heard it right there from Keith. I did get a, a notice from um, my special guest, my daughter, coming to uh, she asked for two more minutes. I said, OK, you better hurry up. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the way Facebook is like, hey, you said an hour. Um, right. <laughs> you, you need to do it out. Now, YouTube is pretty cool. They're, they'll let me keep rolling. They're like, hey, whatever, how much time you want to put on there. <laughs> but Facebook is very specific. They'll kick my butt right off of this uh, platform. So I have to be very, very careful with that. But, um, man, you you gave so many uh, platinum nuggets. You gave a lot of gold nuggets, but you gave platinum nuggets. Um, where can people find you, Keith? I actually pulled up your website uh, page, but it was um, – 75% done or something. I don't know if that's like a webinar that gets started or whatever, but yes. tell us how to find you. How could they reach you and things of that nature? Yes. Yeah, so uh, they can find me on Facebook. You know, if you just type in Keith Tucker, uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, also, they can find my website at www.myfinancialvision.com. That's www.myfinancialvision.com. And then they can always call me as well. My cell phone number is 240 305-1568. And I'm, I'm also on Instagram and LinkedIn as well. So I would love to connect with you. Please send me a friend request and I, I would definitely accept and love to uh, uh, connect with you. Yeah, I, I share that on Facebook, but I'm going to share it again in the show notes and things of that nature. Uh, I'm still uh, work learning where my parameters or boundaries are regarding business and things for sale on YouTube because they're very specific. Um, Facebook does have some things too that the regular regulators are like saying, hey, make sure you don't do this or do that. And I don't want them to shut me down before I get started, right? But this is only my second show, Keith. Wow, show. wow, great. <laughs> and uh, I wanna say thank you for bringing your um, gift here. My daughter is ready. I'm going to bring her into the stream because there she is right there. That beautiful songstress, the lovely uh, Brittany Eileen Ross. But Keith Tucker, thank you so much. You guys You're reach welcome. out to Keith. He has some amazing stuff. Maybe you can hang on for a little while, Keith. Sure, sure. I'm gonna, we're going to now hear uh, something from uh, my daughter because here's what's going on, y'all. Uh, I was thinking about a way that I can bring the arts together because you know, yes, I want to talk business and yes, I want to talk profits, but there are some people who are actors, actresses, musicians, artists, creatives. And as a creative myself, I was thinking, could I have a second platform for passion to profits? That's the arts. So I'm actually going pr pr passion to profits live the arts. And that encompasses all of the creativities, uh, creatives. This is if you design, if you're a designer, I want to have you in that group. If you are a um, artist, uh, maybe you bake cakes and you decorate the cakes. I'm not sure what it is going to be. Um, it's just an idea right now. I'm working through the idea, but it's birthed out of this plat platform because I also realized that my daughter, who I can say a lot of things about her, but when I hear it from other people, it's just. It's phenomenal to me to hear how they respond to her voice. And see, my story starts when she was two. She was barely two. She was one and change. And she was in her mom's shoes. She had on this little skirt. She had on this, 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 uh, uh, she had this brush and she was just going for it. And I remember that like it's yesterday. 
And then I saw her December 3rd, uh, last year, 2019, where she did her final, um, uh, her final time at college, where she was getting her degree, and she did her uh, final final recital. And I'm trying to tell you, I cannot explain it no more. I'm just going to say, welcome to my beautiful Boo Bears, my daughter, Brittany Eileen Ross. Take it, do whatever you want, baby. Two two songs, one song. Say hi to the people. Hi everyone. <laughs> hi, Mr. Tucker. How are How you? How you doing? It's my pleasure. I'm good. I'm good. It's my pleasure to be here. But I've been getting a lot of comments on Facebook on how people can find this broadcasting. Because are you live on Facebook? Yes, we're live on Facebook. It's on your page. If they go to your page, I shared the link. But um, it's live on YouTube as well. But um, you know, we we can we can work that out. And then they can also see the recording after it's over because it'll go up right after that. Okay. Well, I'm not going to be here long. Just I'll just sing a few pieces. Let me hear you a little louder, though, if you can oh. step closer to the mic. Can there you we go. Yes. Okay. So I'm only going to sing a few pieces. Um, I did just recently graduate from Morgan State University. Woo! 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 And I have my degree in music, a liberal arts degree in music. Um, it was it was a great experience. Uh, I started out at CSM College of Southern Maryland, and then I kind of gave up on myself, and then I just started working and um, just forgot about my dreams really until my little brother, my youngest brother, was applying for college, and I said, you know what, let me just apply too, and finish my degree, and I got in and I went and I finished. So I'm thankful. Um, it's been a journey and I know it's just really beginning now that I have this degree so I can really start working in my field. So I'm excited. Um, just pull this up here and I'll get started. So the first piece I'm going to sing is called The Cradle Song um, by Xavier Montesalvitage. Let me find it. And it's just about, um, it's a mother who's singing to her infant child. Um, and she is trying to hide basically um, the realities of life from her child because they are slaves. And um, she's trying to basically sing this lullaby to the child. But in reality, it's just a sad song because in the end she knows that his worth will only be a slave regardless, you know. So I'm gonna sing that since I pull it up here. <laughs> Sorry. And the translation for the cradle song is a lullaby for a little black boy. Right. At Amazon. We're pretty good at getting at first. <laughs> Can you hear the music okay? Yes. Si 
duermes mucho, el Señor de casa promete complar. Traje con botones para ser un grupo. Oh, this is Spanish. Spanish. Oh. Yes. All right, all right. Okay. Well, do you have one more? Do you have one more? Because we um, have about seven more minutes left on the yeah. show. And maybe you could take us out. And then, of course, my hope is to have this. Uh, well, it's not my hope. My next move is to actually have Brittany live in concert by herself, uh, a full concert live from wherever she decides to be. And, uh, you know, wherever she sings is her stage. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to you uh, one more time, Brittany, and then we'll all say have a good night, everyone, and uh, just sing us out, Brittany. Okay, I'll uh, end it with a piece from um, Ragtime. It's called Your Daddy's Son. Okay. <laughs> No excuses, I have only one. You had your daddy's 
Forgive me. You are your daddy's soul. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. That's Brittany Ross, soprano. <sighs> That's me. My beautiful baby. <laughs> How do they find you, Brittany, on Instagram or okay. uh, Facebook? Or tag is underscore anointed beauty. Underscore anointed, anointed beauty. Anointed beauty, yes. Facebook. All right, that's an Instagram. That's on Instagram, yes. All right. And you guys, she's right here on our Facebook page. And as I said, my goal is to start off a whole series in the arts and she She's going to be the first one out. So um, hope this was helpful for you. You guys had some great information for Mr. Keith, Keith Tucker. Thanks for staying with us, Keith. No problem. I enjoyed you, it. Um, <laughs> bless you as always. And my baby, I got tears right here because it's just amazing you, to, to watch you. I love you too, baby. And um, thank you. All right, you guys, have a great night. It's been a pleasure as well as a privilege. Remember that your passion, it lights the people's hearts and you can actually get paid with it. All right, so focus in on your tag, your talent, your ability, your gift, and then take that passion and let's turn it into profits. Thanks for being with me here tonight on my dream stream, Profits of Passion TV. And we'll see you next week. I have Mr. Miss Marlene coming back. Uh, she was our first guest. She only had a little time. She was talking about the garden and you guys having your own food and being responsible for what comes out of that dirt and eating from the dirt to your plate. Very, very powerful information. All right. So I hope you can uh, ride with us next week as we bring Miss Marlene Davis back in our next show. And we'll see you on the next page, the next post, the next YouTube video or the next live broadcasting here at the Dream Stream. Take care. God bless.